Well, hello, 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 and welcome to our Marketplace Daily Devotion. This is Lady O here coming to you rather late this uh, afternoon. Uh, for some of you, it may be quitting time already, or if you work those really early hours, you may have already gotten off from work. So whenever you get the opportunity to go back and replay or review this, uh, just take your time, amen, and just, uh, you know, listen, because this week I told you, as I told you yesterday, we are going to be dealing with overcoming fear of success overcoming fear of success because many times we self-sabotage ourselves and you know in this season I believe the Lord is opening up many doors for, for you I believe that there are going to be contracts that you maybe have been trying to get you know uh, and and, and uh, you know uh, have if you're a business owner maybe you've been applying and putting in for certain contracts to get certain jobs and you haven't been able to get them in the past maybe without you knowing you self you sabotage yourself and I believe that these things are starting to come around again and God wants you to be able to enjoy the full benefits of what he has for you in the kingdom so that's why we're dealing with overcoming the fear of success so today we're going to be in part two yesterday the scripture that we gave you was I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me that's the King James Version Philippians 4 13 today and the Hebrew word that we kind of went over yesterday was strengthen and uh, you you know, it meant to be endued. You know, the Bible says, after that which the Holy Ghost has come, you will be endued with power. That means, you know, you you know, God is going to strengthen you. You know, He's going to help you when there are uh, times that you know you're just weak and you don't feel like that you're uh, uh, competent or adequate, or you don't feel that you're skilled enough. God will step in and He will help you. But today we're going to be looking at. The word strength as well, but uh, not uh, not like yesterday when we looked at strengthen. Today we're just looking at strength, and in the Hebrew it is to soar. To soar it is T S O O R, and this means rock our stone. You know, Jesus Christ is our chief stone, cornerstone, and we have to know that He is our rock. Not you, not your friend, not your best bud or whatever, but Jesus Christ. So in this strength, this is uh, not so much in you being strengthened, but you relying on the rock. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the, the TV star rock, but the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. He is the chief cornerstone and he will help you in your times of need. When you're deficient in your own strength and faith, he will be the rock for you. So sometimes the fear of success uh, can be apparent to a person. I, I, I remember when I first got into the insurance industry, um, this is when the Lord, you know, first allowed me to see that that's what was happening to me. I had, my income went up three times uh, the salary that it was back in the 19, I believe it was, it was 1990s. And uh, I wasn't used to making the kind of income I was making. So I thought it was too good to be true. So in many ways, I was self-sabotaging myself by, you know, taking more days off than I needed because I was self-employed. And there were times I could have been working, could have been prospecting, but because I was making such good money, it was like, well, I can play around today. Well, that was self-sabotaging myself, you know, from being the best that I could be. Uh, I was number one agent out of 3,000 from Tennessee all the way to Miami. And, and I was that for about two years. But after life got comfortable, I started doing things that now that I look back, I know that it was self-sabotaging myself to be even better. And so, uh, we, we you know, it can be apparent to uh, people at some time, but at other times, it can lie just below the surface noted in patterns of thought. Okay, uh, let me say that again. And other times it can lie just below the surface, noted in patterns of thought and or actions repeated by the individual. Okay, so this is what was happening uh, with me some some years ago. Uh, you know, I, I was having you know these these thought patterns that wasn't healthy. So you have to you have to get rid of the stinking thinking. You have to begin to uh, you know ask the Lord to help you get control of your thoughts. It takes a high level of self awareness to identify your own fear of success. Okay, so it takes a person who has who's very in tune with themselves to realize that you know what's going on. You know I, I have a fear of succeeding. So that is why I believe the Lord had me to research this because many times his children will set 
sabotage themselves out of their own blessings because of fear. Fear paralyzes the individual, okay? Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is what paralyzes you. So because we know that fear is not of God, I want to quickly go over this evening six ways to identify your own fear of success. I want to go over that because I really want you to begin to ask yourself and to seek God and say, God, you know, why am I growing? Why am I, you know, able to, uh, you know, from one year to the next, I'm still at the same level. I'm still in the same position. I'm still not growing. Maybe it's because you're going to recognize some of these six behaviors that I'm going to go over and then we're going to pray about it because I don't want you to be at this place next year. Okay. So the first thing uh, you want to uh, notice if you're doing this avoidance. Okay. So if you're writing these down, write that down. Avoidance. Do you avoid being the center of attention? And not that, you know, a lot of people don't like being, I don't like being the center of attention, but uh, it's, it's, it's not talking about people who's always self-seeking praise. It's not talking about that, but say you, you, you've done something that's, that's noteworthy of being praised, you know, uh, being praised or using other avoidance strategies. You know, uh, the Bible says, uh, there's a scripture that says that uh, uh, a, a servant is, is uh, uh, worthy of his hire or something like that, but meaning that if you've done something worth notating and, and, and worth, you know, somebody, uh, uh, you know, paying you for or bringing it to some attention, maybe, you know, what you do, you're really good at. And uh, and somebody has, uh, you know, is want, wanting to, uh, you know, just compliment you and, and you're not used to being complimented or you avoid, you know, the center of attention because you don't want to be in a position where you, you know, have to receive that compliment. Well, that could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, a way of you self, self, sabotaging yourself because how else will people know how good you are if they don't ever hear any praise about what you're doing? This is a way to, you know, maybe get get yourself more business if you're self-employed or maybe to increase what you're doing, you know, get another a, 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 a promotion if, if it's, you know, you, you know, you've been noted for doing a good job in a position. So it, it's not a bad thing. If somebody wants to give you praise for doing a good job. So do you notice that you avoid that? Next one is procrastination. Okay. <laughs> this one is a big one. Uh, this is one that I kind of, you know, I'm not a procrastinator, but um, if I'm doing really good at something, I will put off, uh, you know, doing, you know, uh, following up on appointments or doing, uh, continuing to do it because, you know, I know I'm good at it and I'll get to it and I'll get to it and I'll get to it. Well, that's, that's a, you know, that can be self, self, self sabotaging. So procrastination, do you delay are completing a project? Do you delay when it comes to completing a project? Or do you delay when it comes to continuing to do what you did to succeed the first time around? Now, I love projects. So I don't usually delay on those, but say if I've been doing something and it's been working and now I'm kind of bored with it, uh, you know, I, I, instead of me trying to uh, maybe figure out a way to do it better so I can uh, maybe take it to the next level, I will start procrastinating, you know, like, okay, I get to it. Okay, I get to it. Well, that's keeping you at the same level. That's not good. How are you going to grow if you don't experiment and, and, and seek out other ways to take it to that next level? So procrastination, watch that. Third thing, perfectionism, okay? The person may believe that they are keeping the high standard, but by holding an impossible standard of perfection, the outcome will inevitably be disappointing. So do you set bars that are just ridiculous? Do you set goals that are just like, you know what, you know you're not going to achieve that anyway? You know, like, for instance, I told you about my weight loss and, you know, when they told me 90 pounds, you know, well, I wanted to lose it in one month <laughs> or, you know, even six months. Well, people, I've known people to lose, you know, that amount in six months. But for me, that was realistic. I'm saying that was unrealistic. Okay. Do you set the goal so high until, you know, you're not going to accomplish that anyway. So you self-sabotage yourself from ever achieving that goal. 
So I had to set it down to 10 pounds. And guess what? The doctors uh, basically say, you know what? That's too high. At your weight, you don't need to lose that much. As, as, as someone who needs to lose two or 300 pounds, then we're going to look at five pounds a month. Five pounds a month times 12 months, if you're consistent with that. Hey, that's 60 pounds in a year. So give yourself time to achieve, uh, uh, to accomplish an achievable goal. So don't set unrealistic goals by being a perfectionist. That's something that no one else can do and neither can you. <laughs> okay. Fourth thing, quitting. The person may find an excuse to quit just before the goal is in sight over and over again. Are you one of those people who start something and just before you finish, you stop? You stop just shy of the finish line. Self sabotaging. I'm going over things that you need to be asking yourself, Lord, is this why I have not accomplished? Is it, you know, what I've wanted to in life? Is, is this why I am at the same place I was a year ago, five years ago? Do I, do I start a lot of things, but I don't finish anything? Self-sabotaging. Okay. That's the fifth one. Self-sabotage itself. You may set up stick, uh, obstacles in your way or stay in unhelpful situations. And I would like to add, not just unhelpful situations, but unhealthy situations. It may be somebody listening to this daily devotion and you in a relationship or you in a, a, a situation that you know is toxic for you. You know it is unhealthy for you. Well, this is when you need to lean on the rock. Remember I told you that word to soar, T-S-S-T-S-O-O-R. Uh, it means rock. It means a stone. It means, you know what, uh, turning to the Lord and say, Lord, you know what, I don't have the strength for this. I need your strength. I need to lean on you because only you can get me out of this situation. Only you can give me the strength to break this, this, to break this bondage in my life. I know these people do drugs. I know they smoke. I know they're, they're uh, toxic for me. I need to have the strength to get away, to break away from them. Self-sabotage. Last thing, self-destructive. Left unchecked, that derails you from any real success. If you have a self-destructive personality, or if, you're, if you have a close friend or you're hanging around people who are self-destructive, get away. If you have that, that, that character trait yourself, ask God to help you. You have to take care of yourself first. You know, and we as mothers, we are so good at taking care of everybody else. But what happens when you break down? You know, have a day just for yourself. Put your bed. Well, I, I, I raised five children of my own. I have 11 by marriage, but five children that I raised. And I had to put them to bed by 730 when they were small. I needed me time. From 730 to 11 was my time. And you know what? My oldest is 42 and my youngest is 32. And even today, most of them go to bed around 7, 30, 8 o'clock. I'm calling them at 9 and they're already in the bed because I, I, they developed that when they were babies. And I, I you know, when they, even when they were little teenagers, it's like, you had, you had to get out of my face. By 7.30, go into your room. You know, you got school in the morning. Go to your room. You might not have to go to sleep, but you got to go to your room or you got to get from around me. I set boundaries. You got to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be around to take care of anybody. Okay. So if you notice that you have self-destructive behaviors, take care of yourself first. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Okay. All right, so this lady over here, I'm so sorry I'm dropping this a little bit late today, but I've had a busy day, and now I'm getting ready to go take care of me. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, God, you know what? It's been an awesome day today. We thank you for those that are listening. Father, I pray that you will help them to take this word, begin to examine themselves, help them to, uh, you know, 
ask you, Lord, show me, me, show me where I am self-sabotaging myself and, and setting myself up for failure. Help us to recognize the things in our lives that causes us defeat, that causes us failure. Help us, Father God, not to self-sabotage ourselves or cheat ourselves out of the blessings that you have for us. For you said above all things that you wish that we would prosper and be in health, even as our souls, God. Our souls is where our will, our emotions, our mind, and we have to have healthy souls in order to prosper. Help us to be the role model in the marketplace, on our jobs, God, out there in, 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 in our communities. Help us to be the role model in the marketplace that will cause men to look on us that we can point to you, Father, because it's all about the kingdom. It's all about you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I am so excited I got a chance to do this today. I almost thought I wasn't going to get around to it, but you know what? I did, and so I hope that this blesses you. This is Lady O here saying smooches. Mwah!